Hey everybody, what's up? It's Tipping the Scales. I'm your girl Shay Dawson. Tania Rivers, also known as T, but hold on, hold on. Why why are you not Lashayla today? Because you know, sometimes I forget. Um, so everyone knows that I like I'm, Lashayla. I know Lashayla is my name, but <laughs> a lot of people mess it up. So I have been training myself to introduce myself as Lashayla. Yes. But sometimes I revert to Shay because that's just how the world knows me. But yes, Lashayla. Thank you, Mom. I'm here to keep you honest, sweetie. Thank you, T. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. <laughs> Ooh, we have a special guest today, right, T? Someone we've been wanting to have so, for so, so long. So excited. <laughs> I know. We're like, I'm like shaking because I said like, I don't know, literally probably like seven, eight months ago, I was like, we need to bring a sex therapist on. Yes. And we've been waiting for the best one that we can find. And we found her. So I'm excited. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. So we have Dr. Casey Polite here. Yay. With the case spot therapy. Yay. So excited. Please, please um, tell our tippers hello and let them know a little bit about yourself and where you're at. Yes. Hey, hey. It is a absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. Yeah. Um, and I am coming in from Dallas, Texas. Um, it is cold as fuck. Oh, can I cuss? <laughs> yes, yes, you can. Yes, this is yes. one okay. of those podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> but we like fuck. you already, Doc. It was cold as fuck here today, too. We went to the movies and it was like so cold. But I'm in Atlanta, by the way. Oh, you're in Atlanta. Okay. It's yeah. freezing here too. I'm in Philly and it's freezing here. Oh yeah. So we're all in a, in a place where it's trying to be winter, like it just hit us in the face. Yeah. yeah Which definitely. is more reason for us to be experiencing sex and pleasure, but I know that's what you brought me here for. So okay. we're going to talk about that. Yes. Um, yes. But yes, I am a certified sex therapist. I'm a clinical social worker. I have a private practice here in Texas. It's virtual. So I have like this gorgeous office and nobody comes there. It's really sad. I got to figure that out. Oh my God. So. I'm 100% virtual. We should do a in person episode. We should come to your gorgeous office. Yeah. 100%. Everything, don't they say everything is bigger and better in Texas? (laughs) And look, for those of you who are, of course, listening, you have to go in YouTube and check out this video because Dr. P is Is beautiful. She is we definitely we're gonna get a lot of DMs after this, especially her being beautiful, but also knowledgeable thank about you. sex in general. So yeah. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna let T go because this is like T's like topic because <laughs> we talk topic. a lot about relationships and we, well, we, we talk a lot about education when around like very, uh, very deep, yeah. very, very considered controversial topics. We don't consider yeah. them controversy because it's life, right? And we all experience yeah. it. Yeah. But like T is just like very, very um educated and very like experienced in relationships. And so usually it's us going back and forth, but she's <laughs> usually getting me together. So I let you go, T, oh, and, and kind of start no. us off. I just was, I think you could just tell us a little bit about what, I mean, like what, remember, I think we can all recall back when we were like in second grade and say, I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a doctor. Like <laughs> I want to be a sex expert when I grow up. Like when did a you decide that this is what you want to do <laughs> yes. and how did you get to that point? I mean, it's, it's a very interesting field. Absolutely. And yes, I didn't even know this field existed. So it wasn't a lifelong aspiration, um, Mm -hmm. but I did desire to work in social services. So when I was in college, I switched from pre-med because I couldn't pass organic chem. Don't judge me. And I switched to sociology. We hate hate chemistry Uh, here. That was God. That was God. Thank you. (laughs) Yes. And so I had some great mentors and they were like, you should consider social work because you get kind of the best of both worlds. You can be a therapist, but then you could also work in a county jail if you want it. You could work in a hospital. You can. I was like, oh, I love the flexibility. Let's do it. So I went, got my master's in social work and kind of started my clinical career working in different settings, hospitals, jails, schools. I, I worked all over. And in that process, I kept coming up against, I guess you could say the, the taboo face of sex and pleasure. Mm. Right. And so since it's a part of who we are, it would come up in all of my work, but no one is talking about it. No, we don't talk about it. Okay. How does this, okay. (laughs) But interestingly enough, I still did not know there was a thing called sex therapist. Mm. So I kind of became this resident, like 
sex expert that people would just come to talk to. But again, I didn't know. They just said, you make me feel comfortable. Yes. Okay. And mm-hmm. like my, my coworkers, right. So my office became the place where people would come during their lunch. Like, so I'm having a hard time having an orgasm. Can you help me? Yes, I can sit down. Then I was like, wait. So after that was probably in my, that was like, I don't know, 12 years ago. Oh, it was a while ago. I've been yeah. doing this for a long time. Yeah. And so through time, I started to hear about the profession of sex therapists. Like there was a specialty. You could go back to school. You could. And I was like, oh, I I think I should probably do that. So, so it's like a certification some... or do you have to take more yes. courses within psychology? Both. Like, so you, okay. ha- yeah. So you have the option. So once I became a licensed therapist, interestingly enough, you could just call yourself a sex therapist if you want it. This is the oh. thing that people, they don't really talk about. Yeah. Oh. So anyone could uh-huh. say they are Watch out now. because they're exactly <laughs> because they're licensed to do therapy. But for me, it didn't feel ethically Like I wasn't comfortable with that. It's like, yeah, I could do that. And I've done a lot of my own research, but let me find the most studious, rigorous certification body, of course, daughter of an educator. And I'm going to go do that thing so I could be the best at this, Mm -hmm. right? So that's what I decided to do. So I went back and got postgraduate work, went through a three-year process, literally. Like you had to do clinicals. It was a lot of work to go through the certification program, Um, to get certified. So I did and opened my private practice. I just did it part-time. I was like, I'm just going to like do it on the side while I work for the government who gives me great benefits. Right. Mm -hmm. So we were doing this thing and my love for working with my clients just, it just took me over. I said, I have to do this every day, all day. Like I I, I got it. I I got to do my job. Yeah. I I got to do my job. So I left and bet on myself and opened up my practice full time. And here we are. Now, here's the caveat of that story. So I was exposed to one, not seeing a lot of black and brown therapists talking about sex and pleasure, especially like 10, 15 years ago. So that was a big motivator. But the other motivator was my own sexual journey. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. And so get into it. Get into as it. I, I know, let's, <laughs> let's go. I mean, I mean you're just going to leave this whole show, <laughs> Dr. P. Now let's go. <laughs> oh, and so that had a big um, impact on me. So I went from being in a space where I wasn't, com- I used to not be comfortable talking about sex. I, I couldn't even say pussy out loud. <laughs> I said the, the, right. Like oof. you said the P yeah. word. So <laughs> so I went from that to not fully embracing who I was, but I always knew that I was highly sexual, but I didn't know how to fully accept it because yeah. of stigma, mm-hmm. myth, like all these other things. Shame. Um, what does it mean to be highly sexual when you say that? Like, cause I think we can all interpret yeah. that very differently. Does that mean you like to have sex a lot? Yeah. Yeah. See, it doesn't mean that. Okay. So see? glad you said that. Yes. Yeah. Cause that see? would be someone with a high libido, right? <laughs> But highly sexual, the way I look at it as it's someone who recognizes all of the aspects of their self that are sexual, like Mm -hmm. how I can incorporate it into different areas of my life. When I step out of the shower, oh, I'm just exuding sex. It doesn't Mm -hmm. mean I want to have sex. It just means I'm connected to my sexuality, Mm -hmm. my sensuality, my erotic self, right? Mm -hmm. So I can move my hips I can have no one around me and feel completely connected to who I am as a sexual human. I love the word it's erotic. Amazing. Wow. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Erotic Thank is you. like such a good word. Isn't that it's like, such a great word? It's yeah. so I think it's sexy. a powerful word too. Oh. Yeah. It is. Because it encompasses so many things as it relates to intimacy and pleasure and naughty things and nasty things and vanilla things. Like it's like all the things. Yeah. And okay. so in my own journey, I was able to get to a place of fully accepting, like Casey, you're you're just like a sexual person. Like it's okay. Yeah. And it's okay. you can have Own it and embrace it. That, yes. And you can yeah. have pleasure that makes you black out. Yeah. Like I so just want to black a out. You're a vibe. Wow. Um, can, can we ex- can we talk a little bit about that? Like pleasure sure. that will make you black out? What black does that out. look like? What does See, that feel like? Why are like? you asking that? Because I, I want to be, I want to black out. You, <laughs> you should. should. Black out. <laughs> I want to black out. You should. Don't make me laugh. Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. No, I love oh, it. Gosh, no, the key, really, the, the key to, to maximizing your pleasure 
is vulnerability and surrender. Okay. Let's, right? let's, let's explore okay. that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that is like, you have to be willing mm-hmm. to trust the person that you are with mm-hmm. to go on a journey with you. Mm-hmm. So this is not something they're doing to you. This is not something you're doing for them. Mm -hmm. This is something you're creating together. Mm -hmm. And when you co-create the pleasure experience and completely surrender and can be vulnerable physically, emotionally, and spiritually, you can experience the like most (laughs) angelic pleasure. It's the best word I can think of in this moment. (laughs) Pleasure that you just like zone out after your orgasm, because you can't like Focus. think straight. You're yeah. like, what day is it? What's happening? Where That's good, am right? I? That sounds yeah. amazing. That right sounds there. great. <laughs> that How sounds do we make great. every experience like that one? So I have to ask this because <laughs> okay, I think some people judge. Yes. Uh, what is a healthy amount of sex that couples should have or Mm-hmm. Or individuals, healthy, or individuals, right? Just in general, like is it? Because mm-hmm. sometimes people say every day, mm-hmm. and if you are having sex with someone else every day, then some people say that that's just seems to be a lot. Like, yeah. well, what would you say is acceptable or something that can help create great sex with your partner if you have it more often, yes. right? Well, not know. necessarily. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So All this right. is this is my School us. <laughs> prescription. Okay. You should have physical intimacy daily. Okay. But you don't have to have frequent sex okay. to feel fulfilled sexually. I agree. It's really okay. going to depend on the two or three or however many people are in your little magic bedroom. Yeah. You have to decide what feels comfortable for your dynamic. And that's going to vary dramatically because on a person. I work with, yes. Yeah. And I work with some couples who like, they may have a very regular sex life, like once or twice a week. Now statistics tell us Boring. couples who are, I know, <laughs> statistics, statistics tell us that um, hetero couples, right? They will have sex once a week, Oof. long-term married folks, but they don't have intimacy. Unfortunately, oh, like that nice. is not as intentional. Mm-hmm. And in order to really experience, I think that deep sense of pleasure, you need to have regular physical intimacy. Can you, you have explain to have the difference? Skin between, to skin. Or or what? Okay, yeah. skin to skin when you're talking about physical intimacy. Physical intimacy, right. Okay. And when we're talking about sex, we're not talking about, it's not limited to penetration. Not penetration, right, right, right. Right, now it can be, but it can be oral It Mm -hmm. can be anything that involves an erogenous zone on your body Mm -hmm. where it's a sexual activity, something that gets you aroused. Mm -hmm. It has now crossed over into the sexual activity zone. Mm -hmm. So if you are incorporating that into how you kind of spend time together and have physical intimacy, you want to do that as regularly as you can that fits for your relationship. How there many erogenous zones sensitive. do we have? And we're Ooh, it's there. like over 108, over no 108. Way. Tell us some that are not like the standard. Like how but, do you define um, erogenous zones? And yeah, it's 108 of them. Oh my gosh. There's yeah, so there's many. Like, whole, yeah. Because think about it. Your entire body. It's like cells. Nerves. Yeah. And yes. Nerves. Yeah. There is mm-hmm. at any point on your body, you, you could experience. Look, she, she knows. I know. She's like, I have 108 <laughs> zones. I eat all of them. I only say See? that because like, I have, I love when like my hands are massaged and like yes. the back of my leg. Like there's like, you know, things that I love they that are. like, yeah. yeah. I'm my like, neck oh, yes. is like my oh, spot, like right on the <laughs> side or the like the side of my neck. Don't be giving away your neck. secrets on here, T. That's you know, really good. We got, people who want you on here. <laughs> You're giving them some, some information tips. and they should know. They We're, should know what they are. Yeah. I yes. Agree. But I should are, know what they are. They, you should. <laughs> yeah. Right. But those areas that will get you aroused, that will get you excited and that with proper stimulation, you could actually have an orgasm from them. Really? Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever done that. Well, I think it's time too, to experiment. Because when you think about it, like I when agree. she says vulnerability yeah. and like, what was the other word? It was just like those sometimes. Surrender. And surrender. Surrender. 
Mm-hmm. Ooh, which is a whole nother That's hard. Episode. Yeah, it's, I was it's like literally easy about thing to, to say. say that right? is hard. Yes. That is very hard. Mm-hmm. And and now mm-hmm. actually, let's mark that on our topic for another one. But like, <laughs> it is sometimes for like I am. I need to be more in touch with my feminine energy. Mm-hmm. I very much have a lot of yeah. masculine energy, and I'm trying. And I'm I'm putting it to the forefront. Like I'm trying mm-hmm. to like balance it or harmonize it that we say on the show, and. I think that doesn't allow me to relax or yeah. to relinquish sometimes. You know what I mean? Surrender. In order to experience yeah. in ways that you're describing. Do you yeah. feel like you tr- you want to, you feel more comfortable if you're in control? Yes. And I don't want to be in control anymore though. Like I'm actually kind of exhausted of being in control. Like, it's and tiring. I kind of just want to just like let it all mm. go, if that makes sense. It does. But then yeah. you would need a partner that's really confident with their kind of dominant space, their masculine energy. That's yeah. what you, you need someone like that. I mean, you yeah. might already have someone. I don't know your particular. Yeah, I think, I think we're both in a place too of discovery, right? Like we're yeah. like Good. in a discovery phase. And so I think we both need to work on that together. I'd have to communicate yeah. that like, I want to relinquish my masculine energy. You should probably explore, you know, you what go. other That's things right. you're doing and to exude that too, because I know sometimes I'm like, I shouldn't have said that or I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. And I think I've exuded that for so long that he's used to it. And so I have to let him know that I'm like giving that up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need to have like weekly check ins where you can kind of talk about and process yeah. those insights that you have. Correct. Right. So you can share like, yeah, this is what I've been thinking about. Or the last time we had sex, this is what I experienced and this worked, but this part of it didn't work as well. Or I think I would have, I would have had more pleasure. Yeah. If that is the Lord, this, that is the Mm. conversation because the pleasure is there, but there's times where you're like, Oh, wait, that was different. And you just kind of move on. Right. But you're like, if we explored that, or if I was more vulnerable, Mm -hmm. I would set it in the moment, but you know, so sometimes you get too in your, traditions too you're like this yeah. is what we always traditions. do or this That's is the best word. way yeah. or this is, you know what I mean and I think sometimes that can hinder that but also shout out to my fiance for connecting us with you yeah who's Thank also you, fiance. yeah I'm coming to the wedding exactly <laughs> and he's also uh doing his it. clinical work and research and stuff too to become oh, a licensed great. therapist not That's in sex awesome. but so maybe we'll hit you up <laughs> yes love it love yeah. it for me, I don't know, like textbook wise, how much of sex is mental, but it starts there for me. For like, sure. I have to really be there, have a connection with you mentally to for mm-hmm. me even to want to go there. Like so much of it is not really how I feel, but mm-hmm. what my mental capacity is for a person. And I mm-hmm. wonder how much that truly is connected to sex in terms of how you think and what yeah. that connection is to your body. That's Absolutely. Good. Because your brain is telling your body what to do. Yeah. Right. So it sounds like from a psychological perspective, like you're going to be turned on by like information, right? Mm-hmm. Like connecting to someone's intellect. Yeah. How do they process information? Yes. Like them panties the- right down my leg. You okay, know what I'm <laughs> There you go. Mm-hmm. Oh, that Shakespeare one more time. <laughs> so I can see, right? Like that's important. So true. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you know that about yourself, again, that insight is so important because then you, you know exactly what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Like you have to use that as your guide and listen mm-hmm. to that. And your foreplay may look different than someone else's foreplay because you may need some level of that mental stimulation in order for you to feel connected emotionally. Yeah. You know Mm -hmm. what? Can we talk about the big O? Because it seems to be a hot topic because it is unfortunate because some people, you know, I have friends, uh, women in my circle who just can't experience orgasms either way, whether it be oral, maybe sometimes oral, but never through physical penetration, like with, and I, I don't understand that because, you know, orgasms are amazing. I couldn't even imagine not having them, but there are some people who just shut up, Shay. (laughs) There are some people who can't, 
Like what? orgasm snob? Like, get out of here. <laughs> I can imagine not having one. I just can't even imagine. <laughs> but but it's real. You know this, right? Like, I'm sure yeah. some of your patients who come, you know, to speak with you, that's yeah. probably a, a topic, right? It but is. what happens? Like, is it because they don't surrender and, mm. you know, and, 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 and just offer up their whole beings? Like, what... Is it more mm-hmm. mental? Is it? I even I, I even remember reading somewhere that orgasms, like if you're healthier, that you can have orgasms. Like it's tied to like your diet, which is crazy. Yes, it does so, make an impact, right? Yes. So let's dig in. There's so yes. many variables. So so just to have us on the same page, what an orgasm is, right? Okay. An orgasm is the progression of pleasure. That peaks essentially. That's that it. Just sounds like, erotic. It, it does. Wow. Sounds like my but instant pot. <laughs> when, basically, when the pressure release and the steam just goes. When the, <laughs> yes, that's exactly this what it is. This right? conversation is like arousing me. Is that normal? Yes. Very. <laughs> Very normal. I just yes. gotta be honest. I'm so glad I to mean, hear seriously. that because if yeah. it's not, then I'm not doing a good job as a guest. <laughs> so thank you for the affirmation You're and welcome. validation. I love, love it. Okay. So, but yeah, so that's what an orgasm is, right? So it's mm-hmm. the build, the build of sexual tension yeah. that gets released. Now, in order to experience that, there are so many variables involved. We're talking okay. environment. This is where health comes into play, okay. medications that could be hindering it, hormones, age, wow. race, socioeconomic, like there's all of these factors that play a part in someone's ability to orgasm. But then from a body perspective and stimulation, there's some things that we have to know. One is the vaginal canal does not have this plethora of nerve endings. So this idea that through penetration, women should just have these orgasms, that was just false advertisement, like that we've just been taught wrong, Mm -hmm. right? But uh, most of that is because it comes from a patriarchal perspective, right? Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. if someone with a penis has sex, their focus is on their pleasure and not their partner's pleasure. Mm -hmm. So most, and I think the statistic is now like closer to 87% of women or humans with vaginas, they do not have orgasms from vaginal penetration unless the clitoris is also stimulated. Got it. That's a high percentage too. It's very high. And it's unfortunate because a lot of women feel like something's wrong with them. Yeah. If they don't, and they're like, I don't understand. I can't. We don't talk about it. Yeah. We don't talk about it. And it's like more normal for them not to have the orgasm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Then it is for them to have it. And so understanding what needs to happen and what type of clitoral stimulation needs to happen in order for them to experience that heightened sensation, that is the key. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about it, a lot of us in our 20s, you go a lot of your 20s without orgasming or or having an orgasm a lot Mm -hmm. because you are not, well, some people in their 20s when you're just dating and, you know, you're having sex randomly with one person Mm -hmm. here and another year goes by and you're, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, it's not your, you're not, they're not trying to figure it out with you. It's not, you know what I'm saying? So when you're out there in the dating field and you just have sex, maybe, oh, you see someone, you like them, whatever you're going to date, it Mm -hmm. ends great. But like most of the time it's the male orgasm, having an orgasm and not the, not the woman. Mm -hmm. And I thought in my twenties, I had this conversation with my mom of like, am I doing something wrong? Like how, I don't understand. Like, I like this person. They like me. But even when you think about it, too, sometimes your parents don't even have the information to be able mm-hmm. to explain to you what's going what's on happening. with your body. Right. Yeah. And then there will be times when you have an orgasm and it's not from penetration. Then you're like, wait, there it is. Right. So it's like, yeah. what's going on? Like, so maybe I just want that all the time versus that. Yeah. And then you're just like having these conversations with yourself. So let's, so true. you know, let's talk about another word that you hear often and people like. Is there a difference between a woman having an orgasm or what you hear, quote unquote, you're squirting? Like, what's the difference? And yes. can every woman? Oh, that's a good question. Squirt. Great question. Yeah. Yes. So there is a difference between 
like squirting or female ejaculation and orgasm mm-hmm. because a woman can expel fluid, just mm-hmm. make it flan- fancy for squirting, <laughs> without <laughs> experiencing orgasm. Uh-huh. Wow. But people often think the two have to be connected and they don't. Yeah. No, you can have one without the other, but it just depends. Yeah. So for some women who have an orgasm, they may expel fluid that doesn't squirt. So it may be more of a milky white color versus squirting is going to be a clear liquid. Clear. Yeah. Yeah, it's clear. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, it, you know, I think it's... Uh, uh, it's just ignorance or they don't know, or maybe I'm wrong because sometimes I've heard movies. women say too, that it's urine. And I'm like, hold on. Like, but there so are times wh- when urine is present as well. But so what, so what be, fluid yes. is squirting? Like, is it just, yeah. So there's yeah. so much controversy to be honest about mm-hmm. it. That's so interesting. Yeah. Um, so the research that I vibe with is the research that tells us that there's about 3% urine mixed in with the fluid. So as you are being aroused, your bladder is actually filling up with fluid. But if you emptied it before sex, and that's yes. what it's I mean. not that's what I'm urine. Saying. That's, yeah. You have right? to use the restroom, right? Yeah. So that it's you're gonna not- It's going to feel mis- that way, right? Yeah. And it's also going to feel like you have to pee when you yeah. squirt. That's yeah, the other part. So then warm. I think- Yeah. But it's- typically odorless it's yep. clear it's right clear. like it you're you wouldn't that little three percent urine you don't even know where that is <laughs> in the mix of things but that's right? good for people to know in their mind yeah. to say like oh yes. okay well I listened to the episode and she said it's going to feel like that so maybe I can be vulnerable and maybe I can and, yeah. relax your relax. pelvis <laughs> yeah. and let it and let relax. it squirt you yeah. know and yeah. it's funny that you said relax because there are times when so I'm in, I'm a very impatient person with everything, but sometimes it just takes longer than others. Yes. So if it's taking a little longer than longer. I would like, I have to just focus and relax. If I start thinking about something else, same. It, yeah, it's like I'm it's the, over. Excuse I'm me, the same get way. up, goodbye, let's go. Let's, excuse me, I want to get. Oh up. yeah, because you're but out of I, the moment. Yes. Yeah. But mm-hmm. when a buildup happens, yes, and that's when I just re- relax and let go, and that's when it's like an explosion. <laughs> yes. we, we also have younger people who listen to this podcast too and oh, I remember great. being in my 20s and think mm-hmm. and guys thinking that my orgasm has to come with theirs yeah mm-hmm. can yeah. we talk about that because that's so that's not a, a thing like it, you, you can try but I just feel like why do you think I let's not coordinate like let's just you know what I mean like but if you think about it again, that perspective says it's about them. Okay. Right. Because, because like, it's still this kind of badge of honor yeah. that men often feel like they are giving you this orgasm. Mm-hmm. And technically they're not giving it to, they are, they're partnering with you to experience yeah. the orgasm yeah. because someone could have amazing skills performance wise mm-hmm. and do all the things, but that doesn't mean you're necessarily going to have an orgasm. Mm -hmm. Because if you are stressed or depending on what time of the month in your cycle, if you're experiencing any anxiety, right? Like if you're dehydrated, like all these other things can play a part. If you feel unsafe or emotionally disconnected, if you just had a fight or you're having financial pressures, like all of these factors will impact your ability to experience the orgasm. The mind is so powerful. You just don't realize how much it plays a part of your experience with sex because it, you know, it could either, you know, if you're not there, like you're, you're physically there, but mentally you're not there in terms of, I'm going to think about your key work now, you're not surrendering, surrendering in the moment. Then I think that's where you may have a, you know, just that disconnection. Yeah. I know when I think about me for sex, like I get pleasure by giving pleasure. Like that is a yes. stimulant to me. That's yeah. great. Yes. Right. So that takes me to a whole nother, another level. If I can see myself pleasing someone else, mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. that gets me very much aroused. So yeah. I can yes. have an orgasm giving you one. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. yeah. I love that too. That's awesome. <laughs> So there, please there don't are, listen to this slide. I'm so sorry. I knew you were going to say that in this episode. I actually had a, I was sleeping and I had that in my thought that T's definitely going to put a disclaimer for. I always to have to say, to this. Uh, this is not one you want to listen to my child. But, and also right. too, like a lot of men think that they put their 
masculinity on sex. Like, yes, it's me. It's I'm doing yeah. this. And they like, don't, stop. they're not very educated on yeah. like women's bodies. Like, mm -hmm. how do we start right. to normalize like just that conversation when you meet someone, yeah. when you start to like someone. And then even as you get older and you're dating and you, and you your body changes, right? And you do different things. Yeah. Like, how do you start yeah. to normalize conversations with men about pleasure and pleasuring? Yes. So one, you just want to have more of them. Like, okay. it's all about reps. Yeah. So you want to have more conversation. Yeah. And you also want to kind of get them to think about how it is they think the way they do. Okay. Like, so if they can, re they can recognize like the cultural and religious and systemic and music or I guess that's Messaging. cultural too. Yeah. Yes. Because that's where they, they get their education. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Once you can have a conversation with them about like, so why do you think you connect your masculinity to this? Or think about, especially men who have sisters, right? Mm -hmm. And you ask them the question about like, how did your parents respond to you dating versus your sister? They'd be like, oh yeah, they would just locked, like she couldn't go anywhere, but I could. And it's like, okay, let's talk about that for a minute. How okay. do you think that impacts a woman's feelings about her sexual desire? Do you think she's yeah. like celebrating that? Or mm -hmm. do you think she's growing up in a space thinking it's something wrong with me, but it's okay for my brother, but it's not okay for me, mm -hmm. right? Like there's all of these, kind of indicators that you want to challenge someone to think about yeah. so that you can have that conversation. Yeah. That's beautiful. I have to make sure before I let you go, because I have a few friends that mm -hmm. listen to Tipping the Scales and a few of them may have some, have sexless relationships. I'll just say it yeah. like that. Like yeah. the, the two that I'm thinking about, both are married. One have not had sex with uh, her husband in seven months. And the mm. other one, I think it's almost four months. So to me, mm -hmm. I don't even understand how that is humanly possible. But, you know, I don't come up from a place of judgment because I understand. Like, and marriage like, is know, different than and a And their marriage is different, absolutely. And not only that, I do, I do understand, as I mentioned before, how much of a... Um, mental connection it is like how mint like how much i really yeah. focus how my mind is so powerful so if i'm not really digging you as a person as a human oh, yes. as a partner then i'm not for I, I can't go there but what is your advice for couples mm -hmm. or people who are in relationships that may be stuck and mm. they're in a sexless relationship right now how do they turn that around besides looking you up and finding you so they can get some advice. But <laughs> what are some other things that they can do? Because I think people need help. I think it's more yeah. often than people may be willing to admit. Definitely. So of course, I'm going to advocate for therapy, right? So um, sex therapy, even sex coaching, because mm. sometimes the reason couples aren't having sex is the, the sexual confidence is low. Oh, okay. So not being they literally need to learn mm. how to please okay. each other. And mm. that that very thing can keep someone from initiating. And then once you kind of just get comfortable with not having sex, it's almost like this thing that they just put under the rug and continue with life. I mean, yeah. oftentimes the sexual part of who we are is not a priority. So when life is really like happening, for a lot of people, that's the last thing they're th they're like. We're trying to keep our house. Our kid <laughs> just got you know like diagnosed yeah. with autism. Yeah, like I'm dealing with caregiving for a parent. Like these people, they're like, who's sex pleasure? Yeah, Casey, what are you talking about? Right? Yeah, totally understand. Mm -hmm. However, they need to kind of talk about the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even saying, "Oh shit, we haven't had sex in like how long?" Right. Like even that, I mean, that's the start of the conversation. Like, how do you, are you okay with yeah. that? Like, how do you feel that we don't? Does it impact how close we feel? Like, how is it impacting our relationship that we haven't had sex in seven months? Yeah. That question alone is going to create a wonderful opportunity for learning from each other. Okay. So they start with therapy. Explore. 100%. Because okay. then you yes. probably find out that it's not even about sex. 
It's about other things. It may not most be trash. I this agree. I felt disrespected. I felt. Or I don't even like you. Yeah. You can you yes. can be you can love someone and not like yeah. them. So it's therapy. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. and then why. just for them to start the conversation mm-hmm. and not they can't be okay with how things are. Got it. And how do they find you? How does one find you? Because if they they're listening to the mm-hmm. sound of your voice or they're checking you sure. checking us out on YouTube, and they say, you know what, Casey she is an amazing. expert, and I need help, and yes. I want to learn from her. I want things to be better. I want an orgasm. I want to be fulfilled. Yeah. How do they find you? Where can they find you? Are you taking new patients? I am. I okay. currently am. I do have a few slots for new clients and I'm doing consultations. Typically I'll do a free 15 minute consultations for clients who are kind of considering it, want to learn more, want to make sure I'm a good fit for them. I want to make sure they're a good fit for me. Um, but people can find me on my website, which is just caseypolite.com. Um, a lot of people search for therapists on psychology today. Uh, that website is the most used website across the globe for people to find. Um, Psychology Today. Okay. Psychology Today. So if they type my name in on that website, they'll also get to read my bio, understand what type of therapy I provide. It'll give them a link to email me. And yeah. yeah is this it. something that is Let's... covered by insurance or do you pay out of pocket? Great question. So a lot of therapists do take insurance um, and then some don't. I'm in the camp of I no longer take insurance. Um, it can be difficult dealing with insurance companies with diagnoses in order to bill. It's like a, it's a lot. It's a yeah. lot. So yeah. I find it that it's easier for me and my clients for me not to mess with insurance. So I don't take insurance. Yeah. And yeah. You so it's put private out, pay. You also put out I, content, correct? Where can they find I do. your content? Yes, they can find me on Instagram um, at K underscore spot underscore therapy, K spot awesome. therapy. Uh, and I do, I'm very big on normalizing the conversation, Love right? That. And so I have to model it and it I, it was an uncomfortable space. Might not look at it, look like it now because I'm there. Hey, what's up? Pleasure. <laughs> Did not yeah. start that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had to get out of my own comfort zone in that social media space. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to show people we can do this. Like we can create a space where people can feel comfortable talking about sex and pleasure. Awesome. So, yes. so don't you be know, afraid. Can, yeah. You can relate because like, we're right. definitely, we weren't like sharers and stuff like that. So us having a podcast is like Has crazy. changed us, has like I woke us up it. for sure. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I but it, it helps people. So we're like, that's what we came that's to right. do. So. Yeah. Awesome. So listen, you... Yes. I can't believe that the time just goes by so fast oh with my you, gosh, it flew. but you are amazing. I probably will be yeah. contacting you myself because Feel I free. also, I also am a believer to say, because oftentimes people believe that you need therapy when something's wrong. That's just not mm. true. Like mm-hmm. therapy can be a hundred percent there for you. If you have a concern that you need to, you, you need help with for sure. Yeah. But yeah. also it could just mean, how do I take, you know, how do I become the best version of myself. Yes, How yes, can I yes. take what I'm having right now, which is great to be even more amazing. Yes, so yes. don't think um, our uh, tippers that you have to have a concern or a problem That's to right. see Casey, you could That's just right. want to level up. So expand. make sure you check her out. Yes. Yeah, expand. 100%. <laughs> I love it. You are so awesome. I love your energy. I love your vibe. I'm so appreciative of the invitation and your willingness to, you know, talk about sex and pleasure on your podcast. Um, Thank you. This was so fun. Awesome. Likewise. Thank you for being here, Casey Polite. We welcome you back anytime. Can't wait to do a live episode with you. And hey, tippers, make sure you continue to follow Tipping Scales wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you. Peace. Bye.